Hello, everybody. Good morning. How are you? Rose here. Today, I'm reacting to Foodie Beauty's live stream called Coffee and Chat. This was a live stream I was trying to do yesterday, but a lot of in real life stuff kept getting in the way. I had a lot of stuff going on yesterday. I was trying to react to Foodie and also dealing with moving stuff. And I had somebody that came over to look at my computer because he put everything together and it just wasn't working. And he came over again yesterday and the computer still didn't want to work. But that's okay because where I'm moving to, I have a friend who has other friends that they are computer geeks and they're going to get it working. So I'm not too stressed out about it. Am I disappointed? Yes, because I was wanting to do some gaming content before my move, but that's been put on hold for now until it can be figured out why the computer isn't really turning on and the fans aren't working. I don't think anything's broken. I think that maybe the person who put the things together just did not know exactly what they're doing and it's just a simple fix. But anyway, so back to the subject at hand. Let's talk about Miss Foodie because that's why you're here. That's why you're watching this video. So Foodie did a series of lives yesterday and she went from a place of doing the coffee and chat, talking about all the things she wants to do to as the day progressed to everything just going sideways a bit. And that's what I want to spotlight before I begin to react to coffee and chat. Just show you guys different things for different reasons. Showing you why someone like Foodie, who's got several addictions and obsessions, why it's a really bad idea to try to heal in the same environment as you heard in. Why you absolutely cannot do that especially in her case, because her addictions and her obsessions are, they're over her head and she needs outside help to control them, to get them under control. So let me just go ahead and share the screen so you can see Miss Foodie, because I am going to show the timeline of everything that happened yesterday. I know that Foodie watches my videos because yesterday she said something that I've been saying for a while and she said it in the exact same way I said it. I've been saying to all of you and to her, quality versus quantity. Because Foodie's content, she's been preferring quantity over quality. And because of that, not many people are watching her live streams. If you prefer quality over quantity, that means you're making an effort to put out better product and less of it versus too much that is of bad quality. But she said that yesterday and I'm like, uh-huh, foodie, you're watching me. I know you're watching me. I mean, it's okay. You watch everybody. You watch all the reactors and you pick up different ideas of what to do and what to say in your content from us, from different sources. So I know you're watching me, Foodie. And since you do watch me, allow me to show you you from a different perspective. It might make a difference. It might not. But just to show you you through my lens. So let's start with the coffee and chat live stream that you did yesterday. In the coffee and chat, you started off on a fairly good note. You were thinking and dreaming out loud, which is what you normally do. You talk about the things you're going to do, things you want to do. But your normal pattern is that many of the things you talk about, you don't follow through with. You don't put any action behind the words. It's real easy to talk about things you want to do. But putting the action behind the words, that's what makes the difference between change or no change. But this is you starting off in the first chat of the day, the coffee and chat. You're capable, not everyone. Um, it's complimentary with actual therapy, I find. You can actually just like uh, 
self-teach yourself certain things. You know what I mean? Like learning about emotional intelligence, learning about all that shit. So what I did, if you put in the work, yes, these triggers. Absolutely, yeah. Anything if you put in the work, and that's <laughs> if you put in the work. You right. That's the that's the key thing, foodie. If you put in the work, what you said is very important. If you put in the work, if if a key word, if you put in the work, but guess what? If you don't put the work in, nothing happens. Change doesn't happen you gotta put the work in you can't just talk about it you gotta be about it you gotta put the work in that applies to everybody all over the world who want to make changes not just you everybody but certainly in your case if you're a person and you got a big mountain you gotta climb and you certainly do you got a huge mountain you've got addictions you've got obsessions You've got a toxic lifestyle that you have to clean up. You got to put the work in. Nobody can do it for you. Nobody can make those changes for you. Nobody can take over your life and fix everything for you and then give it back and go, here you go. I did the work for you. Now you can just proceed from here. No, your life is under your control. You can live it however you like because it is your life. But if you want positive changes, you got to put the work in. So you did this live stream and you sounded hopeful. It's almost like you were trying to talk yourself into that life. Problem is, it takes more than talk to make things happen. Anybody that has ever made big life changes knows that. I mean, I'm over here on my side of the fence. I'm getting ready to move. I got to put the work in to make that happen. I'm sitting here packing stuff, throwing stuff away on top of my regular work. Even though it's tiring, I'm putting the work in because I want things to change and I want to be prepared when that change happens. But going back to you, you did this live stream and you were hopeful. You sounded hopeful, right? And then this happened. This happened. Directly after I went to your page, Booty, this is not me manipulating any footage. This is not me telling lies on you. You like to say that the reactors lie on you. They we tell lies about you, although that's impossible because all we do is pull up the footage that you yourself provide and we react to it. But this is the live stream that happened after the coffee and chat live stream. And remember, it's still on your page, so I'm not manipulating anything. This is what you did. Because I don't feel like eating like high fat. I don't know, just the thought of but like that might be too much. I hope it. I hope the cheese melts well. I know cereal with cream. Oh no, I, that was a bad idea. <laughs> so what happened, Foodie? You did the coffee and chat thing. You started off in a good place. You were talking about all your plans, and then you did this. You ate fourteen Oreos during this live stream. I heard. 14. Girl, you ate practically a whole bag of Oreos. Ain't nobody needing that much in the way of Oreos. You can eat a few and be happy. You can have cravings and satisfy your cravings in a reasonable way. <coughs> Excuse me. You can satisfy cravings in a reasonable, sensible fashion. What happened? You started off good, and then you got high, and you started binge eating, going to town on the Oreos, because you were high. I've said it before. A person who has a problem with food, taking the edibles is a bad idea, especially the way that you take them. 
You don't just take a little bit. You always take too much. And if you got a problem with food, edibles, too much green is the last thing you should be doing because that problem with food, yeah, it's going to supercharge it. You're put, putting that high octane fuel in your gas tank as far as that, and you're going to go nuts with the food. It's something you've been doing for the longest. I don't know if you're using something to keep your hunger away all day, and then you're using the edibles at night to sleep. But because you do too much in the way of edibles, the moment you do that, because of your eating problem, you go nuts with the food. Seriously, 14 Oreos in one sitting while you're high, bad idea, very bad. So you started off good and then you just totally got off the track with this right here. Being stoned off your gourd and eating the Oreos. And I'll go back to what I said before. If you're someone and you have extreme addictions or obsessions, you cannot heal in the same environment that you heard in. Anybody who's ever gone to say a support group for addictions will tell you that, that if you want to change your life, if you have addictions, you have obsessions, you have to get away from where you will find the temptations. You might sometimes have to get away from people or environments or places that might lead to or tempt you to go back to the temptations. And the environment that you hurt in is your own home. Because in your own home, you have access to food apps, you have access to food, and there's nobody there to stop you from the overeating. You have access to the YouTube money, which makes you impulse buy. You're too free to indulge in your addictions and your obsessions, including the obsession over Natter. Because Natter did his live stream last night with Didi where he was threading her eyebrows and giving her haircut. And I know you watched it. You went to bed, then you got up and you watched that live stream. And I'm sure that did not make you happy seeing him do something for her. But going back to this, you started off here, foodie. You started off here. And then that became this. I'm not shaming you for eating Oreos. Oreos are good. Okay. Don't get it twisted. They are good. But this is not you just indulging a wanting for Oreos. This is you indulging in your obsession with food. This is you binge eating. This is you being high and indulging in the binge eating. What does that lead to? That leads to you putting on more weight. That leads to more health problems. Do you see the problem? You can't do this and expect that everything's fine. That this is going to this is leading to better health. It doesn't. You were talking about going to a gym. <sighs> Here's the problem. See, a lot of people who have problems with food, if they don't address the issue of the food problem, if they decide one day, you know what, I'm going to get my life together and I'm going to work out and I'm going to eat healthy food, they start off in a really, really good place. They throw away all of the junk food. They buy a bunch of healthy food. They maybe start working out a little bit. They start off in that place. And then very shortly after they get off the track, they start to weaken a little bit. And they start indulging in fast food. They tell themselves, oh, it's okay if I do it this once. 
or it's okay if I don't go to the gym today. They start to give themselves permission to be off the tracks and not get back on. And the next thing you know, they're not going to the gym at all. And they're going completely back to the fast food. And what that leads to is a lot of anger, a lot of self-anger. I'm too weak. I can't do this. It's too hard. I might as well just give up. You can do a million crunches, foodie. You can go to the gym and work out all you want. But the problem with food is still in your head. Until you get to the root of the problem, then you can't begin to fix all of the problem. You can cut out the food for a little while. You can go work out. But the root of the problem is still inside of you where it needs to be addressed. you got to get to the root of a problem to fix a problem. In your case, you need therapy. You need counseling. You need specialized counseling for your eating problem. You need specialized counseling for all of your addictions. That's just real talk. There's many different layers to you as far as your obsessions and your addictions. That Those have to be addressed. If you're just addressing stuff that's going on, on the outside, you're not addressing anything that's going on on the inside. And the inside influences the outside. Do you see? You got to start from the outside and work inside and work your way out. So this became that. I'm quite sure that's up my stomach. Really? Hey, Blanchard, for her. When am I going back to Montreal? And you know what? It doesn't help you that you've got a bunch of feeders in your chat and they encourage you to eat. So you got to make a choice at some point. If you're making positive life choices, you have to make a choice between catering to those people or not catering to them. Between catering to them and maybe getting some extra money on your channel and off and telling them to screw off. That if they're looking to find someone to give money to, to buy food for, you got to tell those people to screw off for the sake of your own health. You got to tell those people, look, I'm not going to die for your entertainment. I'm not going to ruin my health for your entertainment. No, I'm making life choices. And I don't know if you're afraid of if you stop catering to those people that your channel is going to tank. I don't think so. I think you'll get a whole new crowd of people around you if you take that path and you get rid of all the toxic people that are encouraging you to get high and also to eat the food. You put yourself in the corner that you're in by catering to the feeders, by catering to different fetish crowds. You did that. And it's up to you whether you want to come out of that corner or not. But as long as you stay in that corner, as long as you stay there, this will always become this. You start off in a place of good intention, allegedly, because honestly, I don't know if your intentions are true or you're just giving lip service to the audience. That remains to be seen. But this will always become this. And if you want to know the truth, I really don't have any hope for you. A lot of people don't have hope for you because time and time again, you've shown that you don't stick to what you say and you lie and you manipulate and you control people and you're abusive. Kind of hard to have hope for somebody like that. But going back to you, this was you in the start of your live streams. This became you within a very short period of time. Yeah. Thursday. I'm going on a date. It's just like milk. Homo milk. Homogenized milk. Oh my god, this is so bad. Ugh. 14 Oreos, booty. Seriously. 14? You needed that much? Look, we've all gone to town on some ice cream or something, but you're doing this on YouTube. You're indulging the feeder fetish idiots on YouTube. 
You're so concerned about making them happy. What about making yourself happy? You're catering to the feeders at what cost? At the cost of your own health. You're gaining more weight. Amberlynn Reed, she started off in a place on her channel in the 300s. And look where she is now, between the five to 600 pound range, she's housebound. Maybe she's making some money. Well, look at the quality of her life. Look at the quality of what, of what your life has become. You started off in a place where you were actually going out and doing things three or four years ago. And look at you now. You stay in the house all the time. You don't want to go anywhere. You just sit and eat and get stoned and complain about Natter. This is your life. This is the life that you designed. This is the life that you wanted, I guess. And you wonder why people are frustrated and angry at you. You wonder why you're frustrated and angry at yourself. Because you're so obsessed with money on YouTube, getting the most money, getting the most views, getting the most attention. At what cost, though? At the cost of your own health and the quality of your own life. So I ask you, is it worth it to cater to the feeders? Is it worth it to cater to toxic people for the sake of views and money? I don't think so. I think the quality of one's life, the happiness of one's life matters more than any amount of money. I know that YouTube is your entire income and so you are concerned about that, but look at what the obsession with money has done to you. The obsession with views, look, look at what it's done to you. Look at it. Getting completely stoned on camera. And once you're stoned, binging out on food. Foodie, you're five feet tall. You know you're in the 450, 500 pound range. I'm not shaming you by saying that. That is the truth, ma'am. You're so ashamed of your weight and how big you've gotten that you use filters trying to shave a few of those pounds off visibly. But it doesn't mean that they're actually gone. You try to live in two different areas. You try to fool yourself by using the filters to fool everybody that you're not as big as you actually are. But off camera, you are. And your health is declining. And your quality of life is declining. Over what? over a bunch of feeders, over a crackhead. I'm sorry, that's not a good trade-off. It's cold milk. Mm. I'm caught up in So enough with that. Let's go on to the next live stream she did after this one called Bedtime Beezing. For anybody that's not aware yet, I'm sure you all are. But for those who do not know, beezing is a term that Foodie came up with to give herself permission to act badly. She gave herself a cute term to act badly and make it seem cute, make it seem acceptable. It's not. Misbehaving and acting badly are not cute. Participating in self-harm on camera is not cute. And yes, that's what you're doing, foodie. You are participating in self-harm on YouTube. You're hurting your own body with the excessive edibles, with the food. I'm sorry, that's self-harm. You are hurting yourself. And you think it's cute. Or you want to make it appear cute and acceptable by coming up with a term to make it seem like it's no big deal. It is a big deal. Hurting yourself is a big deal. And nobody should be watching this crap. Watching somebody get on camera and hurt themselves. By 
coming up with this term beezing, you made it seem acceptable and okay. It's not okay. It's not. But coming up with this term, you're absolving yourself of responsibility to change your behavior, to make changes to be better. I don't care what you call this. This is not acceptable. This just isn't. This is not okay. Not okay at all. You know, you've basically got Groundhog Day every day at your house. Talking about things you want to do. And then that leads to you raging about Natter or overeating. And then raging about Natter again. It's Groundhog Day. And you wonder why your views are tanking. You wonder why people are bored. You're wondering why more people are going to reaction channels. You're practically handing us your audience. Because you're boring people to death. And your content is all about self-harm. It's either about hurting yourself or hurting other people. Because once you start raging, you go off in your own VIBs. You are abusive to them. Using bullying, intimidation, humiliation to hurt them. It's, it's a crazy chain. You claim that Natter abused you. Although I feel the abuse went both ways that way. You're an abusive person. He's an abusive person. But if he does hurt you, the abuse doesn't stop there. You actually come back on your own channel and you hurt those that support you. The ones that give you money. The ones that give you this lifestyle where you could do anything you want. You could take your income and do anything you want with it. And what do you use it for? You use it to hurt yourself. Over and over again, thinking it's cute, thinking it's acceptable. It's not. It's not. It's toxic content. And a lot of people are getting to the point where they can't watch you anymore. I've had people on my own channel saying, I love you, Rose. I love how you react to foodie, but it's her. I, I can't watch this crap anymore. It's, it's too much. It, it's draining. And for those people, I say, I understand. I get it. If foodie is affecting you in any way, I totally understand. No hard feelings if you can't watch her. No hard feelings at all. It's really hard to make this kind of self-harm content funny or entertaining after a while. It's difficult to make a joke out of this. It's really hard. But going back to bedtime beezing, this is what Foodie did. And I was look just like. <clears throat> I don't know. You know what, Zoe? I'm kind of hungry. You're kind of hungry? Girl, you just ate 14 Oreos. What do you mean you're hungry? See? A lot of people are saying, what do you mean you're hungry, foodie? What do you mean? Why are you still hungry? Can I just give everybody the point of view of somebody who used to be a binge eater? Because I used to be one. Took me six years to fix it. If you're looking at foodie and saying, how can she still be hungry? She just ate 14 freaking Oreos. She just ate. That's not true hunger. That she feels that is the eating problem that's the binge eater in her that is the impulse to binge eat because if you are a binge eater that that urge to eat is it's out of control it is it when you're a binge eater it, it's how can i explain this it's not true hunger because you're not hungry. You can sit there and go to town on the food. And something inside of your brain is telling you 
to keep eating. It is a mental, emotional thing. It, it may not make a lot of sense to others, but that's just what it is. I had moments where I would be full and still have the urge to eat. It made no sense. In fact, my wake up moment that I had a problem came when I ate a whole quart of ice cream and my stomach was so full, I couldn't put a single more thing in it, but I still felt hungry. That was my wake up moment. I knew something was terribly wrong because I shouldn't have been having that thought. And that's when I started to take steps to fix it. And my biggest question that I needed answered was, how do you fix a problem to something that you got a problem with when you can't stop doing it because you can't just stop eating? And I had to learn that you have to give food respect. You have to change your relationship to food. You can't just look at it incorrectly, treat it incorrectly. You have to treat it the way it's supposed to be treated. as just something that you consume to give you self-energy, to go out into the world and do things. You cannot look at it as comfort. You cannot look at it as love, as something that you use in place of companionship. You've got to take all emotional anchors off of food. You have to be aware of all of your triggers. Things that make you want to eat. Do you eat when you're upset? Do you eat when you're sad? Do you eat to stop yourself from thinking of certain people? You have to identify all of your triggers and be self-aware of them. That is how you make yourself stop. That if you feeling upset, feeling sad, feeling depressed, and then you start to have the urge to eat, you tell yourself, no, no, food's not going to fix that problem. I can't go there anymore. I have to find something else to cope. You have to find other coping mechanisms. You have to find things that give you as much pleasure in life as, say, food might. That's another task. If food is the only thing that gives you pleasure, the only thing, you have to find something or a bunch of things to replace it that give you as much pleasure and happiness as the food might. You have to create something else that gives you joy. Foodie has nothing else in life that gives her joy and happiness. Hence why she's having problems giving up the food. Because we're all human. You know, we all gravitate towards things in life that give us pleasure. If food is the only thing that gives her pleasure or comfort or joy, of course she's not going to give it up because that's her only thing. But she's not started on the journey of finding things to replace it and because she's not started on that journey of replacing food as one of her drugs the cycle is always going to continue she's going to stay on this path until she makes another one destiny mom i cannot i cannot <laughs> Hello, your queen. And don't use bad yourself. So she's laying in bed after eating all those Oreos, going to tell them the Oreos. She should be getting her sleep, but she's not sleeping because this is one of her addictions, attention. She always needs attention. Always. I think of all of her addictions and obsessions, attention is her number one. And food is her number two. And because she's on YouTube, the, the different addictions kind of get all wrapped together. You know, she's getting her obsession with money, food, attention, and she can also participate in her obsession with Natter all on YouTube. So she did this bedtime beezing, you know, giving this cute term for her misbehaving, a cute name so it seems acceptable and okay for everybody and then this happened so over on Natter's stream he was threading Dee Dee's eyebrows and giving her a haircut and 
it looked really painful. You know, she didn't, she looked like she was a tremendous amount of pain, but Foodie went to bed and then she did this live stream. I need a proper dinner. Well, Foodie, it was late, late at night. You don't need to be eating dinner right before bedtime. That's how you gain weight. Anybody who's trying to lose weight or get their life together will tell you that. That the worst time to eat a big meal is right before bed because you're eating a huge meal and then you're going to bed and you're not working off the calories. But she got up, she said she slept, then she got up again, and I'm sure she watched that live stream with Didi and Natter, and she did this. So you have a date Thursday and then man candy Sunday. Yeah, I'm leaving it open. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do Friday, Saturday. Um, I don't know, like, I have a feeling if things go really well with the, the Sky Thursday, I might, you know. So you want to make some life changes because you want to be a cougar and you want to pursue younger men. That's what's causing you to have different thoughts and getting healthy. But just thinking about it ain't going to make it happen, foodie. You've got to address your addictions. You've got to address your obsessions. You need therapy. You need counseling. You need that. And anybody who has an addiction or an obsession, it's okay to say, I need help. There's no shame in asking for help. None at all. It's admirable to surrender and say, I need help. I can't do this on my own. I need help. It's admirable to admit that you don't have all the answers, that you can't get a task accomplished alone, that you need assistance of some kind. And you need a lot, Fodi. You need a lot. Your obsessions, your addictions are extreme. They are extreme. You need help. Stop being stubborn and ask for help. Let people help you. I don't like you. You're a horrible, vile person. Horrible. You've been abusive to people. You're neglectful of your cats. I don't like you. But beyond that, you can get help. And you're getting everybody aggravated, coming on camera, changing your mind, doing the self-harm content over and over and thinking that's proper entertainment for everybody. It's not. It's not. Your life is your own. You can do with it as you will. So if you're miserable, understand that it's not the audience that's making you miserable. It's not the VIBs. It's not the reactors. You're making yourself miserable and you're the only person that can change that. And you've got a lot of work to do, but whether you do it or not is up to you. And if we, the audience and the reactors and the viewers, if we have opposing opinions about what you do, don't get mad at us. We're just being honest. We're not gonna co-sign on your bullshit. We're not gonna blow smoke up your tail end and tell you that you're doing right when you're doing wrong. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna call you out. We're going to say the truth. You know, that thing that you don't like so much, that in reality, we're going to put it in your face. You don't like us giving those opposing opinions? Don't watch us. Don't go to the reaction channels. Don't go to their open chats. Don't watch the panels. You don't have to do that. You do that to yourself. And I think it's because... Uh, you are such a narcissist and yes ma'am you are you're not an empath you're a narcissist you're such a narcissist that you're constantly concerned with what people say about you and yet you don't take those things and think about them and say you know what maybe they're right about me maybe i am horrible maybe i did this and this and this wrong and i should change 
You're not interested in change. At least not right now. I've been watching you for a long time. And I have yet to see you have that wake up moment. Where you want to make changes. But as long as you talk about it. And you don't take actual steps to change. This is what's going to happen. You're going to start off here. Talking hopeful. Giving everybody hope. Saying I'm going to change. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And that's going to become this. You're getting high and completely abandoning everything you talked about. Start off hopeful. And then you're doing the edibles, binge eating, getting completely off track. If you stayed in this place and you talked about things and you put some action behind your words, Something might change, but if you go here, nothing happens. And how many times have you been in this place, Booty? How many times? How many nights? How many weekends? How many entire weeks have you been in this place where you just give up and you go directly to the food to make you feel better? I used to binge eat too. And let me tell you, you could sit there and eat every Oreo in the world. You can eat all the food in the world. None of that will give you love. None of that will give you true joy. You can't use something material to give you something emotional. You're using the wrong medication for the wrong problem. I had to learn that the hard way. To stop using food as a go-to, as a comforting aid. You eat because you feel hollow inside. Because your life is without meaning and substance. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for meaning and substance. You're not going to find it in food. I promise you, you're not. You feel empty inside. I know you do. You feel empty because your life lacks meaning. It lacks substance. It lacks structure. It lacks purpose. None of that can be found in food or drugs or natter. You're looking in the wrong places. To fill up that emptiness inside of you, you have to look inside yourself and ask yourself, what do I want in life? What else can make me happy? Stop being a person where it's all about impulses and, and satisfying those impulses and indulging in obsessions and addictions. Addictions are not cute. They are unhealthy. They lead to ruin. They lead you to bad places, bad people, bad habits. There's nothing good about them. And if you have addictions, if you have obsessions, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay. No shame, no embarrassment. Surrender to that. Surrender to knowing that you've got problems and you need help. Ask for help. Get the help. Get it. You don't like the reactors, but they speak a lot of truth sometimes. You may not want to listen, but they're still speaking the truth. And that's something you need in your life, Booty. You need someone to tell you the truth. Whether you choose to use it or not is up to you. But you need it. Because truth leads to meaning it leads to substance it leads to purpose so if you want to stay here and not always go here and then here 
Getting help can mean the difference between being here and here. Okay? So you know what? I was going to react to the coffee and chat live stream. But I think I'll save that for another video. I just wanted to kind of do a discussion video about foodie beauty and everything that I watched this morning and my thoughts on that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll do the coffee and chat one after this one. But just, I'm someone that I used to be a binge eater. I've been watching foodie for a long time. And, you know, I see what's going on here. She's someone that is caught into this wild, crazy eight of, you know, starting off hopeful. But because the addictions and the obsessions have not been addressed, it always leads right here to the binge eating, to the doing too much of the edibles. And, and we, ha we watch this crap. If you want off the roller coaster, booty, you got to get yourself off. You have to. Otherwise, you'll always end up back here, always back at, this, at the starting line. And you're never going to get past that. You want to make life changes. You, you can't keep ending up here. You can't do this. You got to break the chain. You can do that through help and counseling. It's time. You, you're getting your health is getting progressively worse. You're gaining more weight. Girl, your body is giving you so many signs that you need to stop. Anyway. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'm going to go on to the coffee and chat live stream. I don't know if I'm going to cover the other ones because honestly, I I don't want to cover this one, the Oreos one, because she's just high and, and doing the binge eating. And I just don't want to see that. The bedtime beating one, I mean, they're, they're kind of the same. We'll go to this one only. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, take care and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.